a very good day to all of you. I'm Samir Modi, President of Kasi. I would like to welcome you to, to today's workshop on Introduction to the Chamber of Model Innovation, CMI. Organized by Kasi in cooperation with the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry, today's session aims to provide the Chamber timely and important ideas and concepts on how to further strengthen your respective organizations amidst ongoing changes and emerging challenges in the regional and global market environment. Good day, wherever you are in the world, on behalf of Dubai Chambers and the ICC World Chambers Federation, it is my honor and pleasure to welcome you to this informative session that will tell you everything you need to know about chamber model innovation. Today's workshop is part of the key legacy initiatives introduced by Chamber 4.0 Task Force which aim to ensure that all members of the World Chambers Federation have access and can receive guidance while creating, delivering value and capturing value. So thank you very much, uh, both uh, Samir and Hassan for your introductory remarks. It's now my very great pleasure to introduce uh, Natalia Sacheva, who is the head of strategy at Dubai Chambers, who's gonna tell us all about the chamber model approach. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. And Your Excellency, I wouldn't articulate better uh, the carrot and the stick uh, embedded naturally in the Chamber Model Innovation Workshop uh, that we will dedicate our next one and a half hour to. And um, so, Fatma, you will be assisting me with uh, moving the slides, right? So, um, uh, what's important about Chamber Model Innovation Workshop uh, is its interactivity. And hence, uh, uh, even before we go to the next slide, I will ask all the participants to keep uh, your laptops, your computers uh, somewhere close because uh, the value of this workshop, the practicality of this workshop comes from its interactivity. And in, in order for us uh, to, to move a little bit further into the subject, we want to uh, get to know the audience a little bit better and uh, to run a couple of uh, quick polls. Uh, because we know that we all on this call, we are representing chambers of commerce. We are predominantly legacy organizations. And we are also, it's also true that uh, most of our organizations, we have a membership. We are membership um, based and membership run and led organizations. So we want to understand a little bit better uh, the, um, whether you have uh, the mandatory membership for your, for your members as of today. Fatma, can we please launch uh, the first uh, poll? And, uh, as the poll appears on your screen, um, we will ask you to answer the question number one. Uh, today, is your chamber's membership mandatory or optional? Just for instance, in some jurisdiction, in some countries, uh, all um, private sector enterprises um, uh, having the valid business license are mandated to become members of uh, local chambers of commerce. In some jurisdictions, uh, the matter is optional. And the second question that we would like to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to see your opinion on, for those chambers of commerce who have mandatory membership, if we can imagine the world when we wake up tomorrow morning and the membership, mandatory membership is no longer uh, mandatory, it's optional. So your current members, how, how willing will they be to renew their membership once they don't oblige? So what's the percentage of your current members today, if they don't have to be your member, would renew their membership and affiliation with your organization? We keep receiving some, uh, some responses, which is excellent, which is excellent. We give a, a moment. And um, so we are... I think half of our audience have responded. So I will encourage uh, um, more of our participants uh, will give their feedback, whether the membership is mandatory. And if the membership is not mandatory tomorrow, what's the percentage of your members will renew? 
Okay, okay. We're getting uh, a picture. So I think, uh, Fatma, we can, um, we can showcase the results so that everybody sees them. Okay, so uh, among the participants uh, today representing various chambers of, of commerce, um, more than half of the organizations have their uh, membership optional. Um, and then we also believe that if tomorrow the membership is not mandatory for those where it's mandatory today, only 50% of members will renew their membership, right? So 50% would mean that 50% of your customers, of our customer, customers will not come back to us tomorrow if they don't have to. Well, with that, I must say that to put in the perspective, we have been running this Chamber Model Innovation workshops around the world. And I think uh, uh, this is the highest probably uh, percentage of the, the sense of optimism is there. Uh, when we believe that uh, half of our customers will return to us if they don't have to. Because in other jurisdictions, we've seen uh, a much gloomier uh, picture in this respect where um, maybe somewhat 25-30% of their current members will still keep coming and being members if they didn't have to. But still, um, we, we see this, uh, if not threat, but the sense of concern uh, in case our relationship with, them, uh, with our members will change. So, and if you think about it, what can we do in order that all 100% of members will stay with us and more companies will come to us uh, to become our members? This is what this workshop about. The, the next one and a half hour, it's all about what we as Chambers of Commerce um, do in our organization from today, how we think about our services, how we design and deliver the value proposition to our members. So the companies value this service so much that they're ready to come back with, uh, to us, pay our membership, stay with us, grow with us because they choose to, not to be, because they have to. So Fatma, we'll move to the next slide and we'll move um, fairly, quickly uh, through this because uh, I think both of the excellences, Mr. Samir and Mr. Hassan, very, um, very precisely articulated the challenge that chambers of commerce are facing today. In the past 40, 30 years uh, ago, the needs of our members of chambers of commerce uh, were very specific building the trade infrastructure. We want more trade routes. We want uh, to reduce the um, uh, customs in order for us to access new markets. In the year 2000, uh, our members were talking about labor costs, uh, labor productivity, automation, cybersecurity, digitalization. Um, excuse, in... excuse me, Talia. Peter, please, yes. Could we just remove the poll results from the screen? Yes. Yes, please, Fatma, can you, can you please uh, remove the poll results? Because I think the teams do. Thank you, Peter. So, and this is the timeline. And today, when we talk about 2022, 2023, uh, our members are talking about blockchain. Uh, we have just concluded this uh, sentiment and conversation about pandemic. Uh, the climate change is, uh, topic is very acute. So the, the needs, the narrative of our members uh, is changing. So can we, being in the year 2022, predict what will be the needs and demands of our members in year 2040? Uh, I will ask you to, uh, to, to post your answers in the chat box. Um, we have the chat box and you can say, uh, if you have ideas, what kind of needs and demands will be of our members in year 2040? The chat box is located on the um, bottom panel of your screen in Zoom. I think we all, most of us would agree that it's extremely hard given the dynamic and the transformational change that we go, the world is going through to predict the needs of our members uh, in 10, 20, and even five years. So how we navigate in this environment? And this is where chamber model innovation comes into place. Uh, there is nothing inspirational, there is nothing um, overly complicated about chamber model innovation. Rather, it's a framework, it's approach, but if we go to the next slide, about how we think about the design of the services within chambers of commerce. Uh, 
So, and um, uh, when we speak about chem, uh, service, any service, we talk about three dimension. Uh, we talk about, but if you can uh, walk us through this slide, um, three, more, uh, three more clicks. Maybe I can get the control so for it will be easier for me. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, perfect. Thank you very much. So uh, what we do in Chambers of Commerce, we design the service, we uh, create, create the service. We deliver the service using our websites, using our events, using our in-person meetings, and then we capture the value. When our members are uh, doing the payment and processing the payment for the service that they receive from the chambers. And historically, as legacy organization, Chambers of Commerce, we have been quite good in creating the value. We do a lot of, every chamber is very busy and all employees are very stretched. And we deliver that value. But we historically haven't been great in the capturing the value. So how we can change the situation? Um, and I still, okay. So we are talking about the old reality and the new reality. And when we talk about the old reality of the chambers, and maybe these uh, statements uh, do sound uh, quite familiar to your organization. Um, sometimes in your chamber, you run off a corporate competition among employees to come up with new ideas. And then the best idea will get the prize. And sometimes you host the brainstorming session when we discuss what services can we offer our customers. Uh, if this resonates, if this sounds familiar, please do uh, comment, in the, comment in the chat. But we, what we offer, what we suggest is to establish and document the process of continuous generation of the new ideas. Competitions are great, they're exciting, but they can take us that far. Ultimately, we need to create the process when every employee of uh, Chamber of Commerce, of association works continuously on generating and refining this proposition and the service. And then instead of asking the question, what services can we propose? We need to ask two questions. What are the customer's needs and pains today that haven't been met or addressed through our services? And how with the data we know that these services would benefit our customers? How do we know that this is the right service? So, and of course, as chambers of commerce and association, our first thinking when we talk about creating the new services will be, it will require the investment. It will require uh, a long-term investment, potentially hiring the consultant, uh, the, who, the, the, the agency who would stay with us for six, uh, six months, so one, one year, create the strategy, implementation. Cash is king? No. For chamber model innovation, we put the process as king. And as we, you will see further uh, during the session today, uh, the investment that chamber model innovation requires is around maybe 10, 20, maybe $0, but no more than $100 requirement for, for designing and experimenting for the new service. So cash is not the king, it's the process and how we do it. So there are five steps how every Chamber of Commerce today can uh, start implementing Chamber Model Innovation. And these five steps are coming from both. Um, we, as Chamber of Commerce in Dubai, we implemented the process. We worked with World Chambers Federation and International Chamber of Commerce, as uh, uh, Mr. Hassan already mentioned, with uh, more than 200 uh, Chamber executives around 78 countries. Uh, where people have been following the same process of um, uh, designing and delivering the new services. First, you need uh, leadership buy-in uh, for the Chamber Model Innovation to be established in your organization. Um, the beauty of the today is that uh, all members of CASI have this uh, uh, unambiguous and uh, commitment and support from CASI management. Otherwise this workshop wouldn't have, ha have happened. And we had multiple uh, conversation with the leadership uh, of CASI to see uh, this genuine uh, commitment to help the members uh, to become 
uh, and remain relevant to the members and have the sustainable business models of the chambers um, who are members of CASI. Then we do team training. So this is already part. So all the participants of this training, you are receiving this training. Um, although, of course, uh, um, many chambers take it um, a little more extended process with the training when they have uh, five weeks of trainings. This is what we do uh, in Dubai Chamber currently for our uh, part of our staff and employees. Uh, but for many chambers, what's proved this webinar and the manual that you will receive will be sufficient to start implementing the process. So it's already sufficient. So then uh, the step number three, where you with your team, you ideate, you create as many ideas, bold, conservative, uh, very ambitious ideas of services and products that you can bring to your customers. You filter and prioritize uh, those ideas and opportunities. Uh, and then finally, and this is the most important and the most challenging um, uh, part of the process that we with you also address is do the business experimentation within two, three weeks with a very limited budget of under $100 uh, um, and you get the data points to assess whether this idea what further exploration, whether this service should be piloted and it will bring value to your customers and ultimately affect your uh, tri tri uh, triple bottom line as well. So um, this is what we have uh, already uh, have uh, mentioned. A few things uh, to, uh, to mention when we talk about the leadership uh, buy-in. Uh, the leadership message should be clear and consistent. And I believe that on this call, we also have some of the leaders of the chambers. Um, so in the position of director and senior management. So it's important that the message is consistent. Um, you need about one to three uh, months in the very beginning to have this conversation and meet uh, the team who is engaged with uh, experimentation on a regular basis. Um, you need to look into the customer data that you have because many chambers today and association we talk about, we are membership led organization. We have so much information, we have so much data and insight. And then we, we look precisely what kind of data we have about members besides uh, their contact details about their company name, their email address, their phone number, maybe a website. Do we track the behavior? Do we understand what triggers, what, uh, what matters to our customer, uh, about uh, for our customers, uh, most of the organization? And probably on this call, as in our experience working around the world, if we are honest, we have very limited data about uh, the behavior of our customers as of today. But it doesn't mean that we can't improve the situation. Um, speaking about failures openly, extremely important because when we uh, look into designing the new services, inevitably we will have a failed experiment, we will have ideas that fail, and we will talk about the experience of Dubai Chamber today and other chambers when we believe that idea is great, and then when we did experiment, we failed miserably, but out of that experience we also got a wealth of information and data that we used further for the new services that we ultimately brought to the market. And it's marathon, it's not a sprint. The workshop is today is one, one and a half hour. It's very like a con condensed uh, sprint-like workshop, but then changing our mindset, changing how we speak with our team members uh, will be eff effective only if we treat this as a marathon and not a sprint. So, We'll speak, uh, well, today we'll also cover uh, some foundations. We'll talk about uh, hypothesis experiments, business canvas and prototype. And here we're coming to important part of uh, designing uh, the new service or product for Chamber of Commerce. Every service uh, and product uh, that Chamber of Commerce, your Chamber of Commerce delivers to the customers require a business plan, does require a business plan. We have to have a very clear idea of what's the value proposition of this service uh, to its customers. We need to be very, very clear about what's those, uh, who are the customers we are talking about. Because majority of the people on this call, the Chambers of Commerce, working in different cities, countries, uh, localities, we have very diverse membership. We have, uh, let's talk about one single Chamber of Commerce. 
Uh, we have multinational corporations, we have local international investors, we have SMEs, we have technology advanced SMEs, uh, um, those who we call technology startups. We have those traditional SMEs, brick and mortar, uh, mom pop shops on, uh, on the corners of our cities. And they are all these diverse groups of uh, entities, uh, individuals uh, and companies, they are happen to be our customers. And the reality is that, that our services are not catered to cover the needs. One single service is not uh, designed to meet the needs of all of these stakeholders, of all our customers. This is where we have to be very precise about what's that service, what's that product that we design. It's a, what does it mean to have a membership? And this membership, it provides uh, access to the B2B networking events okay, this is our value proposition. So who is that customer segment that we target? Because different companies, multinational corporations will require a particular setup and format of the B2B um, networking event. Um, mom pop shop, uh, traditional SMEs will require completely different uh, uh, form and format of this service. So. This, um, the document that you see right now in front of your eyes, this is called Business Canvas. This is a one page business plan for every single service, every single product that we as Chambers of Commerce design and deliver to our customers. And so, and that's what's important because when we start talking about uh, business uh, model innovation, uh, people get intimidated. Do I need this complicated uh, business plan, a stack of documents, uh, a pages uh, outlining, like a very complicated that usually uh, companies do when they uh, go to obtain a business loan or secure investment? No. For business, uh, business model innovation, uh, chamber model innovation uh, uh, purposes, what is required is to fill this one pager form. And you know what? Uh, the reality is that it's very hard. Sometimes it's very, it's much easier to design a complicated document, rather to put your ideas very crisp and clearly in one single document, in one page. So what uh, the practice that we adopted, uh, for instance, in Dubai Chambers is that any new project, any initiative, any service that will require commitment of resources um, uh, from, from the organization, does require to be put in a simple form of business canvas where we outline value proposition, customer segment, uh, what kind of key partners we need in order to design and deliver these services, what kind of activities we need to design this service, what require, as resources are required. Is it a physical service or like that will require a premise, uh, like if we're talking about the series of events, or it's a digital event uh, that require completely different resources. What kind of expertise we need uh, to deliver that service? Through which channels will de deliver that service? Uh, the channels through social media, maybe we'll have a walk-in uh, uh, setup in our building where people will be coming to obtain that service in our premises. What kind of relationship we want to build uh, with our customers through this service? Because with some companies, when you design and deliver the service with ESA, uh, you will have this peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, kind of relationship and work. When especially when you uh, work, if your members are uh, technology companies, technology startups who are very uh, informal, you will have completely different voice and conversation and approach and relationship with a well-established multinational corporation, uh, and so on and so forth. And then we need to address two buckets. What is the cost structure? How much does it cost for us to design and deliver this service? And how much revenue we expect to receive from delivering this service or product? Um, if you have any question, please do um, uh, type them in the chat box uh, that we have in Zoom, or there is also Q&A. 
uh, question and answers box. Uh, it's completely fine also if you want to ask particular question, just raise your hand. We could also look into unmuting and addressing your question right away if it's relevant to the material. So please do feel very comfortable of asking clarification questions. Just as we like to say, in chamber model innovation, there is no silly ideas of the product and services. And we will share with you some of the crazy ideas that our employees uh, have come up with, as well as there is no uh, any bad question. There is only bad answer that I might uh, give, but I'll try uh, to meet the expectations. All right. So, um, we want right now to have a little bit of engagement and again, uh, learning more about your organizations. Uh, in the chat box, I will ask you to write the main revenue streams of your specific chamber. Where is your funding of your chamber is coming from? Is it coming from the particular service? Is it membership? Is it um, a specific service that we, you uh, sell to your uh, members? Uh, is it maybe there are some chambers who are government funded and that's your main revenue stream? So I will ask the audience right now to type. Okay, the team started typing in Q&A, membership fees. So we have membership fees, we have... Um, uh, CO, I presume it's a, cert a certificate of origin, um, rental income, very interesting, event sponsorships, okay, membership, rental income, uh, um, certificate of origin, uh, membership fees, uh, the standard uh, fees. What we want uh, to address with Chamber Model Innovation, how, so what first, first important, all the services that you have just uh, mentioned, uh, they should be put and they should have the uh, business canvas outline. What's the value proposition for which customers they are? What's the cost and what's the revenues from this specific service? And then through chamber modulation from this exercise, what we want to come out, come out is the list of ideas of new services, how we diversify our uh, portfolio of the services. And when it comes to ideation, coming with the new service ideas, always start with what if? What if my association does this? What if my chamber of commerce does this? So, and to give you an uh, idea, with chamber of uh, Dubai chambers, for instance, um, we have. Uh, in the first batch of the training, so in year 2020, 20, 20, 2021, the team have generated 200 plus ideas of new services and products. But also the team went beyond and look at our organization, what can we do with our organization completely differently? And just to give you the flavor, how, how uh, Sometimes outrageously bold for some people, those ideas could uh, seem. We were talking about, the teams were looking at, what if we convert Chamber of Commerce, our building, our facilities into a free zone? And for instance, we have as an organization, or we've never been into the business of um, providing the business licensing to the companies, particular companies who are coming to Dubai from the overseas. But what if we become the free zone? and we'll introduce the new services. What if we will launch a membership for the individuals? Because many chambers of commerce uh, have only membership for the uh, corporate organization, the legal entities. But what if we create a membership for the individuals? Uh, well, for our city, for our country, retail sector and tourism sector are very important uh, for the economy. What if we build a app, a business around the mobile app for the employees in the retail and tourism sector. And we will help to develop this sector further, but we also have this product, which is a business mobile app. What if we, because our business uh, very much into the B2B networking, creating business opportunities uh, for the businesses, uh, for the investors, um, and we have some automation, but what if we actually build, create a fully automated networking platforms for individuals and for the businesses alike? Should we establish an uh, in data intelligence department that will have its own business model? 
what if we create an outsource service arm? Because we as Chamber of Commerce, we are very good in running marketing PR for the companies, for the government entities. We're very good in organizing the events. Can we create an outsource service arm that we ourselves could benefit from and uh, the members uh, and the, the private sector community could benefit from? A lot of these what ifs. And you don't, at this ideation stage, you don't limit yourself by judging. You don't judge. You welcome all ideas, no matter how conservative, how basic they are from the first glance, or how outrageously uh, ambitious, unattainable they are. Start with what if. And you stop only after maybe like a hundred, five, fifth, hundred, tenth idea. You don't stop unless you get that hundred of ideas that, and again, uh, sometimes we always think ah, we want to do something innovative, but then when you sit and you think about that uh, I, uh, new business ideas and new service ideas for, for your chamber, uh, you run out of steam usually at idea number 10. And then after you pass uh, the 30, 40 ideas, this is when the interesting ideas start coming. So when we start uh, thinking more inno innovatively. Um, so just a quick knowledge check here. I will ask again uh, to, uh, for you to be back to our Q&A or chat box. We have this uh, business canvas for every single service. And let's say our chamber want to introduce a new service and it will be called event sponsorship. We want to create a business canvas for event sponsorship. Which uh, box out of this, which, which box, which item on this uh, business canvas we should start with? Where should we put, like what will be our beginning? Where do we start uh, uh, filling this form? for the event, uh, event sponsorship? Because there are nine boxes. Which one is the most important in your opinion? Is it key partners, revenue streams, key activities, channels? All right. Thank you, uh, Jezreel. Thank you very much. Saying key partners, relations, customer segments, value proposition, Jefferson, activities, value proposition. Well, there are two, uh, um, all of you correct, but uh, some of you are um, having a, a better approach to business canvas. Uh, always when we work with uh, business uh, canvas, we start with either value proposition, what's that special about our service that we want to introduce, or with customer segments. Um, either or, either customer segments or value proposition. And then we feel everything, the rest. Because if we start with something else, if we start with uh, key partners, then we'll be limited by the ca capacities of our partners. And if they say no to us, the, the key partners that we, we kind of envision, then, or they will say yes. And we start, uh, uh, start creating this uh, value proposition, the service and uh, go to the customers. Our customers ultimately will say like, we don't care about that service. It was the key partners who loved the idea, but the customers don't necessarily love this idea. Uh, so, um, so value proposition or customer segments, this is where we start. And why customer segments? Because we, most of us are legacy organizations, which means that, well, in the case of Dubai Chamber, we have uh, nearly 300,000 companies registered with us, 300,000 uh, companies. And so that's why when, um, and some of the services that have been existing, we have, have been providing certificate of origin, uh, the basic membership that implies access to events, trade delegation missions. Some of these services have no any relevance to, for instance, technology startups. Technology startups are concerned about uh, getting their foot in the door to the uh, big uh, corporations. Technology uh, companies, entrepreneurs are concerned how to access VCs and angel investors. So this is where, if we know that this is the customer segment we have on our books because they are our members, but we don't have a specific service, we look at this customer segment, we specify 
who is this customer? What's their behavior? What's their needs? What's their pains? What their gains? And then once we articulated who is this customer and which uh, needs and demands are not met, we go to the value proposition, what kind of service we can offer them, and then we fill the rest, right, of this answer. Okay, value proposition or customer segments. Um, speaking about um, prototype, we got an idea with you. We want to have uh, an event. We want to have a, mag for instance, let's, let's imagine that we want to have this mega event and we want to introduce a, a sponsorship, sponsorship, but we've never introduced uh, any sponsorship before. So how do we, um, uh, what kind of product uh, prototype we can create around this service? Because the idea of chamber model innovation, we never create the ultimate product itself. We create a prototype of a product. They, then we can test with our potential customers. Um, and I think I can't but uh, resist, and I think we have time to, um, I, I might give you a little bit of um, uh, more, more idea of what prototype for a, a, a new service uh, could be. Um, I will give you an example of the company. Uh, it's a company, it's a group of people, they didn't actually have the company. Um, the group of people got together and the team thought, you know what, Let, let's build a technology solution. Let's build a mobile app use, using artificial intelligence. And this mobile app will help people who are going to the mall, the shoppers in the retail shops, in the retail space, who are struggling with the choice to make in the in the mall, which item to to purchase, and um, this so this uh, mobile app will help people to make this decision and choice in the shop. So sounds so sounds sensible. Sounds like sounds like a great idea. It will just require uh, one million dollars investment for the IT development of the back end, front end uh, of this uh, mobile app. Um, so the team was sitting and somebody said, guys, so we believe that the biggest problem, the biggest challenge that uh, shoppers have today is the choice. They're like, yes. And somebody then added, but before we commit $1 million to building this product, addressing this problem, what if we actually go to the mall and talk to the people there to validate our idea? So the team went to the malls. They went to the several uh, malls across. Uh, this was the case in California. They went to several malls in California and they talked to the shoppers. And what they realized, zero, zero of the customers of the shoppers said that, oh my God, I'm struggling with the choice. And I wish there was a mobile app that will, or somebody who would help me with the choice. Nobody testified that that was the biggest problem. However, what they discovered that it was predominantly men, uh, males who struggled with, when they were shopping in the malls to find the right fit for the dress shirt, for the professional shirt that they would wear to work to the professional occasions. So suddenly there was this aha moment before you, before you put the money into building the new product uh, you validate your hypothesis, you validate your idea by talking to the customer. Okay, they got an idea. So if this is the uh, problem that uh, males are facing when they are purchasing the shorts, the shirts uh, in the malls, um, shall we build the mobile app now? Some sort of uh, app that will help? Uh, uh, what the team did, they needed a prototype. And what that prototype would be? So they've built, by that time, they already had a list of uh, a few hundreds of people, um, like friends, family, colleagues, co-workers uh, on their list. So they, what they've done, they've built a simple one pager on the internet, which was saying, are you looking for the perfectly fitting dress shirt? Uh, feel, uh, leave your phone number and our concierge We'll call you, take your requirements, and we'll ensure that we will uh, help you to find the right fitting shirt for, your, for you. So 
there was no any automation beside the basic page. They started to receive this, these calls. And through these calls, they were getting all this information about who is the customer, uh, what's the main pain points, what they are looking for. And this process was very manual. And they were doing this for about two weeks to obtain all this data. And only after they figure out what was the exactly pain points and how you can automate this process, the team, what they've done, they put their money and efforts into the building the AI algorithm, the technology that they further sold to the e-commerce stores. And the e-commerce stores uh, embedded this technology and optimized the shopping experience uh, of the dress shirts on their websites. So you see this, this, the, this evolution from the idea, we build a standalone our mobile app to help the shoppers with something. This was not a problem of the shoppers. Through the experimentation by talking to the customers, they narrow down the problem. And then using this uh, narrowed problem, they built a prototype which was not a technology itself, which was not a complex algorithm. It was not a complex uh, app. It was a simple page through which they obtained more data before they went into the developing the service. And so this simple page, this is what in this case would be a prototype. Uh, in case of Dubai Chamber of Commerce, let me make it uh, even more relevant uh, to you. For instance, um, we as Chambers of Commerce, we have service providers who are content, contacting us and saying, I'm the legal company, I'm accounting company, I'm the company, marketing company. I work, can you as Dubai, uh, Dubai Chamber of Commerce uh, help me to um, sell my services to, uh, to a wider uh, pool of companies? I want to grow the business. On the other side, we as Chamber of Commerce, we always receive these inquiries from the companies who are saying, uh, Chamber, uh, Natalia, uh, do you know a good accounting company who is catered specifically for the uh, SMEs? Because I'm a small company, I need somebody who understands the local requirements, uh, tax compliance and so on. Can you introduce me to those? So we kind of like got this idea. And so our idea would be, uh, should, should we as Chamber, build a, this uh, matchmaking tool that will allow companies to, it's like a marketplace where the companies, the service providers can present their services and any company can uh, come to this platform and get, uh, get the service from uh, the service provider. So technically we can build this product. It could be a fully automated um, platform, marketplace with algorithm involved, we need to test it. We need to create a prototype. What would be our prototype? The way we did with uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, we've, um, first of all, we've communicated with uh, the service providers, those contacts that we had already. We sent them a, uh, an email saying that, dear service providers, we are looking to build this solution. And if you would like to be um, uh, to be part of this uh, part, part of this uh, marketplace, you need to provide this, uh, us with these details. You need to uh, go through the verification process, um, and there will be a fee a service um, attached to this to this platform. If you are interested, uh, feel free to, uh, to 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 submit your details here. So after we've gone through this, so we envisioned the prototype. The prototype was in the words. We articulated what we are working on, what that service is. And then after, the, after we got enough of the interest, enough of uh, uh, customers, uh, companies uh, getting back to us and saying, we need this service, we want to uh, this service, this is our data, we want to be verified, we want to be on the platform. We didn't have any platform. We just outlined the platform. We said, all right, but before we go to the full search platform, we're creating a prototype. And that prototype is a web page on the on the fam of on Dubai Chambers website where we list you, and along with that, we'll create uh, marketing interventions to promote your business to our members. And this is our prototype. So you understand. So and right now, the team right now we have a very big and complex project 
on uh, um, it's ongoing um, on we are creating an open uh, open source uh, CRM where any company in the world can uh, be part of that uh, database and access uh, the verified uh, potential partners, kind of like potential service providers. This is the project that right now the full flush solution is being built. But where we started, we started with this simple prototype. And it took us several experiments before we learned what worked, what didn't work, and what the limitations of that. So I hope this gives you idea of the concept of the prototype. Um, all right, so, and then here we do the knowledge check. Right now we like the knowledge check, we like the engagement. Um, uh, this will be in the form of uh, Paul. Just imagine that your chamber of commerce is con uh, considering introducing a new service the service that you are bringing is you help publicly listed companies in your city, in your country, to access individual industry advisors. So you have the companies, you have publicly listed companies, and they're mandated to have, by, by law, for instance, they're mandated to have the individual uh, advisors on the boards. And the companies came to you and said, like, Chamber, can you help me to get these advisors? So, and you are thinking, okay, if I'm introduced and provide this service to the advisors and to the uh, companies, how this prototype would look like? So, and we will have some options. All right, so it will not be as a poll. We'll go to, I think we'll go to the next slide. No? Oh, no. Uh, so, all right, so let me give you options. Let me give you options. Option one, two, three, four. Let, uh, uh, let's, uh, let me type in the chat. So the first uh, prototype, the first, uh, I will be typing in the chat so everybody can see it. Uh, the first, um, uh, the question is, what will be the prototype? What will be the prototype out of all we name? Uh, full fledged platform, pl um, full fledged um, a tech platform uh, for companies uh, and advisors. Advisors. Uh, number two option will be a call center. A call center um, um, connecting uh, advisors, advisors and companies. Uh, number three, it will be web page. Uh, web page with um, profiles of advisors. So which of these options would be um, the prototype in our case, if we want to introduce this service? We have the options of number three. Okay, great. So we get, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would address the number two because number, number one and number two, yep. Uh, we got some question, uh, some answers. So, um, the most straightforward and cost-effective way would be a web page with profiles of advisors. It can be a set of even LinkedIn links to the LinkedIn profiles of these advisors on your page, which would be one of the most cost-effective way just for the sake of experimentation and prototyping. Call center actually will work if you already have call center capabilities within your organization. So uh, the person who uh, responded number two, you're partially correct, uh, Subir. Yes, if you already have call center capabilities, uh, then uh, to allocate uh, a certain amount of time, like one hour a day on these activities, that would be also a cost-effective prototype. The only um, uh, option that is not uh, a prototype for chamber model innovation is a full-fledged technology platform because full-fledged technology platform will require you uh, de design, uh, implementation, uh, testing of this platform. And this might take you somewhat in between uh, six months to one and a half year. And again, this is the ultimate product. Prototype is always simple, quick, and cheap. That's extremely important to emphasize. So, and here we come to, uh, we talked about, you create these 100 plus ideas, maybe 200 plus ideas. You feel for the most viable ideas, you fill the chamber um, uh, business canvas 
And again, this is the tools, this is the materials that will be provided to you. Uh, after when you start with value proposition or you start with a specific customer segment that you want, you can uh, deliver the service and the service will be a paid service and it will be valuable service. Then you create a prototype, you envision the prototype. And then what's important in this process, you will have to discard a lot of the ideas. You'll probably experiment with about every month, you can experiment with one or two ideas. So about 90 plus ideas will be retired. They will put to rest for good, or they will be just shelved for, for, for time being. And what's important, some of the most remarkable corporations and organizations like Google, Boeing, City Bank, uh, their idea retirement rate is somewhere in between 95 to 97% of all ideas their employees are generating are shelved. It doesn't say that uh, you are not good enough, idea are not good enough. It's a natural cycle. We need to generate and we need to uh, say we were not right. This idea will not work. And that's why we discard it. The great example of that, it's Google. Uh, if you actually go on Google and you Google uh, the portal, which is called Google Graveyard, you will, you will find dozens, if not hundreds, of Google projects that were introduced by Google in cooperation uh, company to the market with Google, with all their advisors, technological capabilities, with all their markets and sites, and some of their products, services, they were in the market somewhat one month, three months, and then they completely discarded these projects, cancel those. And uh, so, and this is a natural process of how we're experimenting and building on. Um, so uh, key learnings, ideation is critical, come up with as many if as possible. Uh, and focus on volume. Prioritizing those ideas, which to take forward, which not to take forward will be challenging. But, but one question that makes the difference if you ask, the ideas are great, but can we run an experiment for this idea? That's another question. Because we can come with so many ideas, easy and complex, but if we can't get the data and using the data to assess whether it's a good idea or not, uh, it doesn't worth our time and effort. All right. Um, hypothesis and experiments. Uh, so in chamber model innovation, once you get an idea, you need to formulate your hypothesis. What you believe? I believe that uh, sponsorship packages uh, are of great value for multinational corporations in my country. I believe that uh, family businesses in my city, in my country, um, uh, are ready, uh, are seeking digital transformation and ready to pay for the advisory service for digital transformation. That's just two hypotheses that I just shared. And for each of these ideas that we generate with you for the service, we come up with a hypothesis. I believe that, we believe that. And then once we formulate the hypothesis, we create experiment. How do we prove that our hypothesis, hypothesis is right? So, for instance, we got an idea that um, uh, many SMEs in Dubai, many SMEs in Dubai, they actually look into establish a digital presence uh, uh, to do their online presence, uh, seeking the support to have their online digital presence today. And they have limited capabilities. They're looking for a technology platform that will help them to manage all their social media posts, to respond to their customers' uh, inquiries uh, across multiple uh, platforms like Google reviews, uh, Amazon reviews, and so on. So, and this is what they're looking for. They're looking for one-stop shop where they can manage all their digital presence. That was our hypothesis. And we actually built a prototype around it. And half of our hypothesis proved to be correct and half of our hypothesis proved to be wrong. And um, the, it's experiment, the process uh, with which we test our idea that tells us whether our idea right or wrong for this market. So, and here I want to differentiate with, because a lot of people get confused and use these two words uh, interchangeably, while there is a vast difference between uh, the two. We talk about the experimentation and we're talking about the pilot. Um, remember when I give you an example of the, um, uh, the team who, uh, who, have, who have built this uh, 
uh, wanted to build a mobile app for uh, dress shirts, uh, the choice. So their experiment was around, um, their experiment uh, was around, experiment that they did was uh, creating this one pager when the people would put uh, the phone number and the, uh, uh, the, the people will submit the phone number and their concierge service, the actual people will call them back and get the ideas. Uh, this is the experiment. We're experimenting on part of the idea. It's cheap or free. It's frequent, easy to deploy, and cost of failure is very low. Okay, it didn't work out, nobody responded, not a big deal. Only after the experiment is successful, we do to the pilot phase. And usually pilot is in between three to six months to obtain enough data. Uh, when we talk about full idea, we talk, um, it might be a little bit more expensive. You might put some money and investment into that. Um, we focus on the specific success and the cost of failure is uh, high or relatively high. Experiment and pilot. So it's two different things. And through experimentation, we always get the initial idea. We get the data points. And then using data points, we further formulate how the pilot would look like. Look like. And now, knowing this experience, uh, we'll put it all together into the case study of a Dubai Chamber of Commerce. Just to give you a little bit background, Chamber of Commerce, Dubai Chamber of Commerce, we have representative offices across different countries, including in Latin America. But those companies, they are not our members until they actually come and establish themselves in Dubai. Our team in Latin America, they were tasked to ideate, to come up with ideas, what kind of services we can create to those companies in Latin America so they can become our customers, but not necessarily our members. You see the difference. So Fatma, I will ask you right now to walk us through uh, the specific experiment and what the team did for, for, for that idea. Hi everyone, as Natalia mentioned, we're going to be presenting one of the case studies of our uh, experiment that was conducted by um, our team at the Dubai Chamber's representative offices in Latin America, in particular our office in Brazil, uh, Argentina and Panama. Uh, because of the time difference, the team could not be here today, so I'll be presenting their experiment. Uh, this was a successful experiment that we had done, and it is now in a pilot phase. And uh, the way we will be presenting it to you is the same way or format that we present our experiments internally to our management to get any necessary approvals for our new service ideas. So it's good to keep note of how the format looks. Uh, as Natalia also briefly introduced, um, our team in Latin America, they're tasked with attracting businesses to come to Dubai. And one thing that the team shared with us is that they know that there's a lot of great businesses in Latin America. There's great companies in Latin America that will do really well in Dubai. However, a challenge that they thought exists is that there is not enough market information or information about the Dubai business environment in Latin American region. And this is where we can come in. What can we give these companies to encourage them to relocate or move or expand their business into Dubai? For this experiment, the team, step number one, is they filled out the business model canvas. So if you look at the box on the right, we'll start with uh, describing the customers. Uh, the customers for this experiment are stakeholders that we already have that have been showing interest about Dubai. They've been attending some of the webinars, some of the events that our Latin American team have been uh, creating. They're local export promotion agencies the local chambers of commerce in Latin America region and other pre-selected contacts and companies. Why they said others? Because through the experimentation, one of the objectives was to find out who else could be interested, which you know, companies and which sectors could be interested. What could we give the customers? The value proposition that the team put forward is that we can give them a Dubai market introduction service which can include like a package. It can include market reports about Dubai, sector reports, and introduction to a number of businesses in Dubai, like a matchmaking service. Next, because it's an experiment, we always write down what our assumptions are, what are our, our hypotheses, what do we think our customers want. So, looking at our customers and what we think they need, the, hypo the main hypothesis we had was that we believe that there are 
many Latin American companies that are keen to learn more about the Dubai market and have access to information that will allow them to enter the market. Under this hypothesis, secondary hypothesis number one, we believe that there are Latin American companies that are willing to pay a reasonable cost for the service. Number two, we believe that Latin American companies tend to think that Dubai is out of their league, it's too far, they don't know enough about it, and this holds them back. And number three, we believe that the Latin American companies are okay with hiring a market introduction service and receive market information digitally, and it's not necessarily necessary to go there and meet them in person. So once we have the hypothesis, we start thinking about how do we design an experiment that can give us answers whether these hypotheses that we listed are correct. Do customers really feel this way? Do they really, are they okay with paying a fee to, to take a market introduction service? The team designed an experiment was, that was basically a survey. There's a lot of different ways we can contact our customers and get their feedback. For example, um, interviews and so on. So in the survey, the team um, asked questions which relate to the hypothesis to answer whether they are correct or they're incorrect. And ideally we give about two weeks for every experiment because we don't want, want to waste a lot of resources. We don't want to waste a lot of time of employees working on complex long surveys. So two weeks from when the survey is designed, sent out, received and results are compiled. And with every experiment we have KPIs. So if you look at the box at the bottom right with the metrics, our KPI, what's going to tell us if there is interest in this service or this value proposition or not? So as you know, and maybe a lot of your chambers also face this, we all have very big databases. Sometimes when we send emails out to these databases, not everybody opens the emails. Some email contacts may be outdated. Some people just skip through the emails and don't open them. So we put a KPI of out of all the emails we send out, if more than 5% of people see the email subject and open it, then it's a good indication that there is a good number of companies that are interested in the subject. And another KPI we put is that out of the people who open the email, if 2% of them open the survey, because it's an email that was sent out asking people to fill out a survey, and they go through the whole survey, they answer all the questions and submit the survey, then 2% is a good indication that, yes, there is interest in the particular service. And now we can look at the results that we got. We were actually surprised. You can see the email format on the left side. This is what the email HTML looked like. And the orange box is where we, we asked people to submit the survey if they're interested in getting more, you know, more services with market introductions and market information to Dubai. The results of our metric was that we were hoping for 5% of emails to be opened, but an amazing percentage of 22% of emails were opened. Um, not only the, does this tell us that we kind of have a good database, but it also shows the, the level of interest from Latin America when they saw a uh, market introduction to Dubai, the level of interest they have to Dubai market, 22% opened the email. We hope that we have 2% of complete surveys filled out and sent back to us, and we received 5%. To give you more figures, uh, the team had sent out 1,861 emails. Uh, 411 were opened and the results or the surveys that we got back was over 100 surveys. So 100 companies responded and that's a good indication of, you know, 100 companies and their feedback is a good indication of what we need to do and what customers really want. Okay, now looking back at our hypothesis, um, the first one was that we believe that Latin American companies are keen to learn more about Dubai. Just by looking at the percentage of emails opened and the percentage of surveys answered, we could say that data shows that yes, there is interest. They want to learn more about Dubai. We also saw that there were a lot of sectors, different sectors of businesses who were answering the emails, including technology, agribusiness, F&B, consulting, and others. So secondary hypothesis, will uh, do Latin American companies, are they willing to pay for such a service? So again, this was a question in the survey, would you pay? And more than 60% of them 
click the yes, that yes, they would pay for any service to help them expand into the Dubai market. Our next hypothesis was, we think that there is an obstacle. Latin American companies think that Dubai is out of their reach. This was proven no, we, are, we were incorrect. The responses said that 80% or more than 80% of the companies who answered the survey said that we do not think Dubai is out of our reach. It is actually uh, one of the key markets in our international expansion strategy. So they were already ready to receive the information. And the third hypothesis, we believe that the Latin American companies are okay with hiring the market introduction service and receive the information digitally and not necessarily we have to go there and meet them in person. And uh, the data through the survey sh showed that this is correct. Most of the respondees said that they are okay with getting their information about market through the internet and through digital forms, through emails and etc. The team did a very good job in understanding through the survey who exactly their customers are. They created like a customer profile. Who's been responding to our survey? What is this customer interested in? What do they need? What do they expect from Dubai Chamber? And if we are pro to provide them with this market introductory uh, service, what do they want in this uh, service? What's, what do they want to be included in this package? To show you more details, uh, from the survey results, we now understand that most of the customers were between the ages of 30 to 50 years old. Uh, most of them were males who responded to the survey, and most of them were top C-level or managers in their, in their organization. Uh, this, the companies that responded were mostly small and business enterprises, SMEs. We also got insights from the survey about which countries or wh wh what is the location of the companies that are the most interested. And as you can see here in the graph, the most interest was from Chile, Argentina, Brazil, and you can say Colombia. These are actually the top economies in Latin America. And this is good for us to know because now we know where to focus, where to focus our service and our marketing campaigns. Next, we wanted to find out from them, uh, what are the sectors that are the most interested? because we're planning on producing sectoral reports. So the responses showed that most sectors that are interested in Dubai are the technology, agribusiness, consulting, and food and beverage. So now we know who we're talking to, how we can launch the service to them, how, who we need to reach out to when we launch the service. Okay, we asked them about what are the challenges? How can we help? So the, the top three challenges that uh, we received was, uh, they want to find business contacts, they find the challenge of who are the business partners that we can trust. You can find a lot of companies in Dubai, but who are trustworthy that we can set up a relationship with. And uh, the availability of market information, more information about Dubai market. Now this is great for us because all of these services are services that we can do. They exist within the different departments of Dubai Chamber. For example, we, we do credit rating report, uh, reports to tell companies whether this business partner, partner is a company that's trustworthy, that's set up in Dubai. And all the team had to do was kind of like take these different services from the different departments in Dubai's chamber and put them together as a package to answer their customers' needs. Also, a few more insights we got is what do you, what do you really need uh, to enter Dubai market or a new market, market information, and again, matchmaking service. More than 70% of companies uh, requested these two. So now that we compiled all of the results, we know what the customers want, we know what they need, we know what they expect from us. We always look back at the business module canvas because after seeing the results of the experiments, we can always tweak the canvas if needed. So we know what the customers want now. We might be able to change our value proposition a little bit to add some things that they requested for. And now we will go back and think again, who are our key partners? Uh, do we need to involve anybody else? What kind of cost do we need to look at? And so forth. With the results of the experiment and the updated business canvas, we design the pilot. Uh, so as Natalia also mentioned that the difference between the experiment and the pilot is that the pilot is actually uh, like, um, mini or a simple version of the service that we want to launch. And it is a paid service. The only way that we can really prove whether our service idea will actually succeed is to actually test if people are really going to pay. 
because in a lot of experiences we had, um, a lot of people respond and say, yes, we are happy to pay. But when you offer them the service, nobody actually pays. So the pilot has to be a paid uh, pilot. And to show you the final pilot that the team came up with, uh, the new service is a package of Dubai market introduction. It, it will include a general market report about the Dubai business environment and specific sectoral reports focused on the interested sectors that uh, reached out to us. And it will also uh, have introductions to a pre predetermined number of target contacts. To keep the pilot simple, um, we have a pilot package, if you can see at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have um, limited it, uh, it to, uh, to matchmaking of three to five companies. We will also share with them the list of recommended service providers that we have at Dubai Chamber to help them with legal uh, accounting and company setup. And we will share with them credit reports for companies that they are interested in partnering with. And also personalized invitation to relevant events that we have, for example, the Global Business, Business Forum, Latin America. And we have a Dubai Chamber trusted e-network of companies, including logistics companies, suppliers, and so on that they will have access to. Um, this is now the pilot has been launched and this package has been shared with the list of companies who responded to the, com uh, to the survey and other companies in the customer segment. And they are going to be paying for this pilot with a payment link. Uh, by the end of six months of the pilot phase, we are going to study and see how many companies out of the ones we reached out uh, will actually pay for the service. And after this, we will know whether it makes sense to launch this as an official service of Dubai Chamber. Uh, the team has ideas that once it launches as an official service, we can also have different categories for this package. So we can have like a gold package, silver package, bronze package, and what every package includes can be different. For example, with gold package, maybe we will have matchmaking service to 10 plus companies or an but, but, <laughs> Sorry, I have yes, to jump in. Fine. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yes. So <laughs> we are done anyway. See. It's a validated learning yes. as we get the data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So next steps. Yes. So, okay, because of the time. Uh, so now you know more about the CMI. The next step, if you want to implement CMI in your chamber, what should you do next? Uh, take a look at our CMI playbook if you haven't already. We will also be sharing the link with you after this workshop in an email. You can start bringing your ideas together, coming together and doing ideation ses sessions. Who are your customers and what can you give them? And then us at Dubai Chambers, we are always happy to receive questions from you. We will be sharing our contact details with you after the workshop, so feel free to reach out. And lastly, we want to tell you about an event we have coming up. It's the CMI Chamber Model Innovation Around the World event. And this is uh, basically a three session event, which will happen virtually. Uh, first session will be in September and then November and December. So the first session you can register already 27th November and you can scan this link for registration. Every session we will be inviting one or two chambers that have already started the CMI process. They've done experiments to come and share their experience Tell us what was successful, what experiments worked for them, and tell us what challenges they faced and how they overcame this challenge. So it's a learning experience for all of us. 